Now we're going to actually play a game, and so we can show you more nuances of the rules and some strategy for play. So, like I said in the earlier video, you determine who starts first. This is a very simple way to do it. You just take a puck from each player, hide them in your hands, roll them around, and then give it to your opponent. If so, when if you get it correct, your opponent has the right to determine who starts first. I'll let my opponent shoot first. Okay. That way, I'll have the hammer. Jeremy has the breaker, the opening shot, I have the hammer. Often the hammer can win or lose a game. So I prefer to, to have the hammer the first go round. Okay, great. So I'm going to start here, and I start with an opening shot like this. And there's a perfect opening shot. I've got my 20. As is Dave's. All right, so that's the first miss here. So now I need to, I want to hit him off and ideally put myself into a higher scoring zone. So here I'm going to come at an angle like this. I don't want to shoot him straight off here because then my puck will stay here. Any puck that's shot directly in line with the other puck, all the energy will transfer from this puck and go into that puck and this puck will stay still. However, if you come at an angle, then some energy is going to stay here, some is going to be imparted here, and it also changes the line that this travels on. Specifically, it's really interesting, is it changes along the perpendicular between centers at the moment of contact. Now that's a wonderful thing that you know we know from playing pool, but it's very helpful in Pichna. So these are very difficult shots, but by using that principle, I can knock him off and hopefully, in perfect case scenario, get a 20, or at least get myself into this area here. So anyway, let's give that a try. Ah, eh, well, it's close. Okay, my turn. <clears throat> I'm going to try to knock him off. I'm going to come over to the legal limit of my quadrant. Yeah, I missed him. I didn't hit him, so mine's off. So I have another free shot here. Which, when you get free shots, it's really helpful if you can take advantage of them and get a 20. Yeah, nice shot, nice shot. I'm going to go for his fiver again. Okay. okay. So that, that was a mistake. Dave wanted to stay on the board. Yeah. Um, I got so, him off, but I yeah. went off. So he gave me nice another shot. opportunity for a free shot. No, nice, I took nice. advantage of it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Back to a 20s race here. This is somewhat uncommon to make this many 20s. <clears throat> Alright, so just to show some different, I'm intentionally going to not make a 20 here just so we can bring in some different elements of play. There we go. Okay, so like Jeremy was explaining before, I'm going to try to come in at an angle and tap this puck and go into the 20. And that's the word, the word carom comes from, caroming off another puck. All right, so that's a legal shot. Uh, he didn't hit it quite hard enough. So now I don't have much in the way of getting a 20. It's slightly possible. But I want to come in from over here because if I come in from this way, I'll knock myself off. So my primary objective here is just to knock Dave off and stay on myself like that. Okay. Now I'm going to try to I'm going to hit pretty hard. When we hit hard like this, we call it the Americano shot <laughs> uh, because Americans are known to be quite uh, aggressive. Uh, quite aggressive. Yeah. All right. So this is an Americano. And there it is. And there it is. That was in a perfect Americano. And uh, uh, I have one more puck, and Dave has the hammer. So again, uh, I'm just going to try to knock him off. And this alley here is the widest that I've got. So there we go, just like that. 
Now, he's got so many 20s, he's got eight 20s, I have six, so I can't win this game. But just for the purposes of show, I'm going to try to knock him off. It's a little bit risky because if it hits the post, his puck could go in the 20. But I'm going to try to make a clean shot through this alleyway here. Yeah. Okay. And that, so now it's the end of play. So we would score this. I have no pucks on the board, but I do have eight 20s on the rail. So that would give me 160 points. Dave has six pucks on the rail. That's 120 plus five. So that would be 125. And there are two ways that you can play this game. You can play to a predetermined best of, like, uh, you know, best of, of five or, or a race two, so a race to three, a race to four, a race to whatever you want. 400, 300. Or you can, you can play, you know, in terms of games played. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing that way, all you care about is who oh, wins or loses. Yeah. You, don't, you don't care about the accumulation of points. Another, in my opinion, more interesting way to play is to set a predetermined point total. 500 points is very common. And then you play to whoever reaches that point total first. To me, that game is more interesting because even if you're behind, like Dave is here, it's still important for you to make points because you can accumulate points that, that uh, help you, you know, overall. Whereas when you're just playing a game, then extra points are meaningless. Yes, right. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay, and there's a third option when we're playing tournaments. We will play uh, just eight games, and um, whoever gets the most points at the end of those eight games is the winner of the tournament. If it's a tie, then there's always a 20 shootout. Same with this game. If we both end up with 520 points, we'll have a, a 20 shootout. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll get into another Strategies and Tips video real soon. Thanks.